Okay. Sound now? There should be sound now. And the co <laughs> far out, the color on this is terrible. Filters, color correction. Okay, just bear with me. I'm trying to get the picture to look better. But it doesn't seem to be. It's extremely yellow. I don't know how to get the yellow to go away. So this is the default setting that I have it on now, which I don't think looks any good. Hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the stream and try and just work this out. All right, I'll be back soon. That's a, that's a bit better. I'm not sure what happened there. That is better, isn't it? Okay. I try to go back to all the default settings on everything <laughs> and then just adjust them slightly. But yeah, I think that looks good. You can see enough. Radio! Let's start fresh, shall we? Good morning, everybody, or good evening to those that are in nighttime. Um, we are doing part two of the jellyfish today, and we get to start the colors, which I think every one of us is pretty excited for. Um, hey, Maureen. Hey, Mike. Hey, Luella. Good to see you guys on here. Okay, um, radio, I reckon we just jump into it. Let me have a sip of coffee, recuperate my frustrated brain, and then we can have a go. Okay, now, where to start? So looking at our reference, we have very, very vibrant colors in here. So I'm thinking what we might do is we might actually get these like translucent sort of turquoisey blue colors in there. In the top here and over here. And then we will reassess. We'll do that. Um, okay, so that blue. Oh, I just noticed something. I need to find that line over the top here, which pretty much looks like it's divided in half over here. So let's just use our white pencil and just add a little bit more to this section in the outline. 
that we so that we can just see a bit more there. So following this one. So that's too high. I just went too high too quickly already. Let's see like over there. Not that section. So whenever you get lost and you have an outline like this, it will be good to go back because then if you're not sure about a certain section, um, this will sort of point things out for you pretty easily and then you should find your, your spot again. So this section here. Hey, Christy. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So that gives us sort of that curvy bit up here. And we should be able to follow the rest along pretty okay. So we want to get these turquoisey colors in here. Or oh, I don't know if turquoise is the right color for it. Uh, it's more of like a. What's this? Azurite blue. <laughs> so we're going to add these blues in before we even come close to the pinks and we will do the same on the legs over here and then we will bring in the pinks after. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so using the Azurite blue number 170 Our Pablo pencils again today. Uh, we might use some of the luminance, the Caran d'Ache luminance pencils, but we will see how we go. So 
the azurite blue. There we go, we found you. Right here. I think I'm sorted now. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. We all have those, those moments where we get tested. Oh, this is a nice player. So I'm just going to put this all along the top section. If you want to know why I'm putting a color in a place, look at the reference on your screen. So if you can have the video on one side and have the reference on the other side of your screen, um, it'll be very handy for you. Maybe you should refresh because everybody else here can see. <laughs> okay. So I'm just using the side of my pencil. some of this the blues in the sides here in these sections here it's like a greeny greeny kind of blue so paying attention to where those areas are it's actually such a nice color to have right next to the um, next to the Pink. Did I put that in the right place? Yes. And then here. Put that over here. Just above here. Okay, so I haven't sprayed this. You see how dirty my hand is already from the black? So I need to put something down so that I don't make a mess. So let me just quickly grab something. I'm just going to use one of those clear, um, like, cello, cellophane sleeve things. So that you can still see through it, even though it will be quite reflective. Hey, Barb. 
So it's, it's going to still be a lot darker than this, but this is, um, yeah, pretty much that sort of color that's in there. So when we look, we can see that color in the knife, the print here. So it's that color there. And then we will actually add a little bit of blue. So a good blue to add to that one, be the one right next to it. So cobalt blue number 160, we might go lighter, uh, we, oops, okay. Blue one sixty. And we'll add a bit of the blue in there. This color is slightly darker than what that color is, so it will be good to add it right next to it. And because it is translucent against a very black background, um, it's going to end up being even darker, anyways. Now we want to add some of that blue on the tentacles. Oh my gosh, I totally want to cover this in a glossy varnish. I think when you when we make this look really glossy and that really dull matte black sort of disappears, I think it's going to look pretty good. I'll show you guys how I do that. And I want to do that with the um, picture that I finished with the uh, January color pencil channel challenge. I really like the way that turned out and I think it'll be nice to also add a nice gloss varnish to that one.
his smell back on? Did you manage to get, get it right? Okay, that's probably about as far as we go with the blue. Maybe even add a very light amount of it over here. Right here. Now, do I want to add pink yet? Do I, no. We're going to go with the black. And add because these are translucent to the black background I want to add more black in here because the whole idea is for it to have that translucent look I need to remember to do this so this is ivory black 496 all the areas that are quite black already even between the pink so the areas I'm talking about are in here so those see how very dark it is in between the nice bright colors so I want to add these blacks in the legs where the blues are and then when we, and then I want to add black over this as well, and in the blue, some of the blue that we just put down over there. Hey Luke. <laughs> What's today? Today is the 8th of January. What a freaking first week of the new year. It's been crazy. It's been so good. But I can't believe that we're already a week into the new year. Just like that. A whole year is gone. <laughs> I would love to hear what your like if anyone achieved any mail uh, major um milestones during 2017 and if you have any particular goal that you might want to reach in 2018 when i say a, a particular goal you want to reach in 2018 I'm, I'm asking you in awareness of the fact that it will probably change because we, throughout the year, we change our minds according to the time that we're in. So that's why I think New Year's resolutions and stuff never work because it's only working for your mindset at the time that you make it, but it isn't necessarily going to be that way later on. But anyways, let's not get technical about it. If you have any sort of anything that you'd like to achieve this year, in your current mindset <laughs> then um, tell me uh, this goes here Is that the same black as the background? Yes, it is. So once you add the solvent and it dries completely, it does turn into, it still turns into a very matte black. It doesn't stay as black as that. You will never get this kind of black result unless you're using black ink. You won't get that with pencils, um, unfortunately. So, But if you apply a gloss varnish over it, you will get those bright colors come out and it takes the matte look away which makes it look brighter in a sense so i think i'm gonna i will do a video once the jellyfish is finished 
and I got a couple of drawings actually on how I adhere the drawings with a archival adhesive to a board and how I um, will then seal it with a varnish and then it doesn't need any framing so if you seal it with a um, an archival um, matte or gloss varnish then it almost works like an ad an adhered shield of glass that's how protective it is to your uh, drawing so you don't even have to you could frame it without any glass or you could leave it like that without a frame so I will have to do a video on that because I have a couple that like when I finish my drawings I just put them in a protective sleeve and then put them away in my cupboard so there are a few that I'd like to properly finish off okay so in this one there's a fair bit of black as well so it looks like I've made mine a little bit thicker this leg is a bit wider than what it actually should be is it or is it just my mind thinking that oh no that looks pretty wide okay it's just my brain making me think it's different when it's not Maureen's goal for 2018 is to art more often. <laughs> I like that. Majin wants to finish her book illustrations by the end of February. Started them February last year. Oh yeah, that's a good one. here that needs to blend in with the background it needs to be straighter <laughs> okay so there's one thing that I've learned about myself that if I do something for others or others have an expectation of me then I will do it I will do it but if I only do it for myself then I don't do it does that make sense for example these drawings because I know that you guys are relying on me to teach you how to draw or to you know you guys are relying on me to broadcast what I draw I, I do it I'm held accountable in a sense whereas if I w was just gonna do it on my own I probably wouldn't achieve half as much as what I achieve by putting myself in a situation where others are reliant on the information that I'm putting out there. So that it's something that I need to incorporate in all aspects of my life. For instance, and I'm going to do this right now, um, food. Food is a big thing. Like I, I really struggle with food and I have gained a few kilograms. Like. I, I'm still comfortable with myself, I'm happy with myself, everything, but I know that I could just lose that extra few and I'll be even more comfortable um, because I, I also know that I haven't been exercising or doing anything. I've been sitting on my butt for 10 to 12 hours a day. So for me, if I want to change that, I need to put it out there and make it a challenge for myself so I have to um, feel like I'm held accountable f for you know showing that I'm doing what I say I'm going to do so what I will actually start today is I want to um, just like refresh like give my body a little bit of a a boost and just go raw for a little while 
Because I am vegan. Just because I'm vegan doesn't mean I'm healthy. I've been eating a lot of breads and pastas and vegan junk food. And that hasn't been any good. <laughs> but I think what I want to do is I want to just eat some raw food for a while. So just have smoothies and salads for the next... <laughs> Let's be bold. The next four weeks, starting today, the 8th, Monday, the 8th of January. So the 8th of February, I will stop. So I'm going to prep my food every morning and I'm going to put out my day's smoothie and salad prep first thing in the morning, starting tomorrow morning, because today's already started. So starting tomorrow morning, and I'm going to put it on Instagram and I'm going to be like day one and I'm going to end on the 8th of February. And by doing that, I feel like I'm held accountable because s someone else is watching. Does that make sense? But I know that I will probably fail within the first couple of days if I just did it for myself. Anyways, that was very much off topic. But um, it's sort of relevant to art. <laughs> So I'm going to have some food on my Instagram for the next month and then at the end of the month once I've, once I've achieved what I want by just eating smoothies and salads for the next four weeks, just raw food, then I will remove it. Ah, Bob says, my goal is to finish my work. Sometimes I can't get past the ugly stage. Yes, that's a good one. A, a, a lot of people face that, I think. Because they want, want it to look good straight up, but it, it takes a bit of building up before it starts looking really nice. You are not the only one that has that problem. Wow, Luke, that's amazing. <laughs> I like that. Spend more time with friends and do more art. See, and that sort of thing is also just it's good for your soul. <laughs> Run a marathon in October. Yes. Wow, that's insane. Yep, Maureen. Don't I know it. <laughs> Living with an Italian doesn't make it easier. <laughs> Uh, smell? Oh good, you're on here. <laughs> Once you draw two times a week, I have to make the time. Yeah. The nice thing with drawing is that you could, it's not messy and you can draw anywhere. So even if you can only dedicate like 10 to 15 minutes a day or a week to drawing, that's something. And usually even though you intend to just do 10 or 15 minutes, you'll find once you get started, you can probably be stuck there for a good hour or two. Maureen says we will remind you, Sheldon. Yes. Oh no, I'm not recording this. Oh. When you said the word remind, I was like, oh. Usually guys remind me for camera check. Okay, I'm good now. I'm good now. Okay. Let me just switch my watch to remind me. <laughs> Goodness. Oh yes, well actually New Year's Day we went for a 15 kilometer bike ride. Vinny took me, <laughs> uh, I think they just call it downhill mountain bike riding and I 
So he has, we've got proper mountain bikes, but I've never used it like that before. I've only ever ridden, you know, just on the side of the road and maybe on some dirt with a bike. But this time he took me where there were rocks and it's a proper trail for mountain bikes. And you got uphills, downhills, rocks, and the pathway is only like this narrow. If In my mind, I thought the pathway was gonna be really, really wide, but a bike trail is very narrow. <laughs> And you do not want to see the bruises on my legs. I fell off so many times. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it was a real adrenaline rush and it was really good because even though um, my heart rate was like 180, it was really, really high. Um, and my breathing was hectic, but you sort of, the adrenaline just takes over and you don't feel the pain of your breathing. Or the pain of the exercise so I thought that was really really good <laughs> and I feel pretty proud that I did a trail like that and Vinny's heart rate stayed at like 110 120 for the whole time how just how but yes we plan on doing more more of that I'm, I'm doing some yoga with girlfriends this afternoon I'm going swimming on Thursday and I'm going to do a spinning class on Friday. So, um, yes, you saw the bike ride on my calendar, but I, I usually switch those to private, but that one I must not have switched over. But yeah, that was a little ramble that sort of went off topic. <laughs> Christy says, my goal is to make time for myself, to get healthy, draw, paint more, and to enjoy life. Luke says, in 2017, I ran half, two half marathons in the same week, so the marathon is certainly achievable. <laughs> That's crazy. Well done. I can barely jog consistently for more than 10 minutes, let alone run or do a marathon for kilometers and kilometers. But we all have different, different bodies and abilities, so we need to do what works for us.
Luke says the trick to running longer is to run slower. And the trick to running faster is intervals. Yeah. And I think also consistency <laughs> is key with running. If you want to keep building up your ability to run further, it's not like something you could just do once in a while. Like, get consistent for a month or two and then don't do it for a couple of weeks and then get back into it and expect to be as strong as you were the last time you were running. I think with running you really do have to to keep that consistency. But again, I, I don't know if I can really say that because I am not a runner by no means. <laughs> I'm a complainer. <laughs> if I have to go add running, then you'll hear me complain and complain and complain the whole time. I can walk forever, walk fast, but running is not my thing. <laughs> it's funny though, like, this, the different kinds of pains that you deal with when you're exercising, like the pain that I get in my leg when I'm riding a bike, I feel like I'm okay to deal with, but the pain that I get in my legs when I'm running, I don't like. It's strange. It's, it's, it's like different, different pains in different areas and it's almost like you're more to you can tolerate those certain pains more than others. So I would rather you know, even though I'm breathing like a crazy person and my heart rate, is, heart rate is sky high, I'd rather have the pain of that on a bike than running. I don't know if I'm making sense. But yeah, that's sort of, I guess, different exercises for different people. Or why some of us prefer certain exercises to others. I'm still just gradually adding some of the black to build up the the black in the background or through the translucent areas of the legs. some of the black in these colors that we put down right here in between this one talking while running is good <laughs> isn't that hard <laughs> Luke, you definitely know what you're talking about. You could probably train us <laughs> in running. <laughs> Be like an, a, um, an audio trainer. <laughs> so I've got this cellophane thing out, but I'm not even using it. I don't like, I just don't like placing something under my hand. It's very weird. But I guess I guess it's not too bad because as long as I don't place my hand like on the middle here, it should be fine. So my hand should constantly be on the background and not be going over the jellyfish much anyways. 
that's my excuse for not using something under my hand. Okay. <laughs> here. Okay, and then we're adding the black over this because this is also translucent. Oh, that's a nifty trick then. So Luke says, the trick to not have pain from running is to take it step by step to have your body get used to the shocks. And talking while running is good. When you cannot talk anymore while you run, you are running too fast. That's interesting. for the blending. So today, I was initially going to do the Smart Art Box video today, but I haven't received it yet, so hopefully I receive it today, because I have it booked for tomorrow. Okay, so I've dipped that in my solvent.
a little excess on my brush so I'm just going to apply that on some of those bottom sections you see just underneath those pink bits there's a bit of a darker shadow to like the right side so what I'm doing now is whatever excess is on my bra brush just at the bottom here and sort of over these pink areas here I'm just going to use whatever's left on the brush almost gives it like an airbrush effect this makes it look very soft supposed to go over there but that's fine see it's already giving it like a three-dimensional shape okay yay now we can get to the color of the pink if we want to let's go with a really light black pink how bright are these luminance pencils let's see if i can get something super oh yes this one do i have a color like that in the public pencil okay I'll probably just still just stick to the Pablo pencils so I want to find some of my pinks so that's going to be a really good one for these dark pinks the really light ones so the pink <laughs> these two it's going to be really nice when we add the orange I think the orange is such a nice addition um, obviously our white to lighten up the really really light white pinks orange there's some like red like a reddish orange in here And then the 
there's a bit of a brighter orange in here and there's even some yellow So this stream is going to end at 10 o'clock because I'm starting the, well, we'll probably quarter to 10. So another 35 minutes because then I'm doing part three of the fantasy art piece next. Um, so we'll just see how far we get. Today for part two. Um, <laughs> okay. So, with these colors, I think I'm going to go chop and change between these two, the pink and the white, to get all the light colors in. Okay. So, we got white. Double zero double one and pink zero eighty one. Right. So now you just want to work section by section. So you're paying attention to your reference. So when I say section by section, I will work on a piece and then I'll work on the next piece and then maybe this piece and sort of We'll start at one point and follow along where I see those colors because these are our foundation colors before we add the darker pinks over the top okay and then over that I'm going to add the white because it's even lighter than that And then right next to it, I'll add that pink again, because this is the pink that is going to be underneath the brighter pink that we'll add later. I think I'll add the white first this time over here because it's very highlighted. And this is where that tentacle is going to start here. over it.
Sorry about that. I just quickly said goodnight to Vinny. He just come back from his night shift, so he's only gonna go to bed now. Poor thing. He's so tired. <laughs> okay. So going on here. That is a good tip, Jackie. Draw while you watch the stream, I guess, because the stream, because the streams are so long, um, I, don't, I don't know how you can just watch without doing something else. I would think that it'd be pretty boring, but there's quite a few of you that, <laughs> that watch, but don't do anything else at the same time. Or some of you like to cook or do whatever while you're watching but yeah if you can do art while you're watching even if it's totally different to what you're watching um i i sort of expected that i sort of had the idea that that's what you guys do anyways but yeah doing art while you're watching the videos would help okay this one's a much darker pink And in terms of using your art, your art supplies that you haven't used before, um, do small things, like look, even a half the size of a card, something really small, like the yellow rose that we did, that one was really small and it was so much fun and it wasn't a wide range of colors or anything. So maybe pick a small thing and then pick an image online and pick a supply. So say, I'm gonna try these supplies, put the supplies aside, pick a picture and make it really small because you don't wanna overwhelm yourself and then just try it. Just do it. So maybe say the next time, or you limit yourself, say, before I can buy my next art supply. So if you find that, oh, you see something and you wanna buy these art supplies because you loved a video that you saw about them before you allow yourself to buy those art supplies you need to have used an art supply that you already have that you haven't used before so that would be that would also test your <laughs> resilience <laughs> test your patience and your ability to not go ahead and buy something that you really want because you were that motivated at the time to do it and you just have to do artwork first before you can buy that art supply. You'll also probably save some money if you do it that way. <laughs> okay, so this is also the start of another tentacle in here. So I'll add this white that we see in this tentacle here.
That's already starting to look pretty cool. Turn the webcam off. I keep moving my whole body from left to right. <laughs> um, so tentacles here. Keep my hand sideways so you can see more. I really want to add some of these darker pinks. So using the purplish red number 350. I'm, st I'm still not doing any detailing. I'm just getting sort of, I'm getting values established. So that it'll be easy for me to see where to apply detail when the time comes.
Maybe Postman's here. Nope. It was a delivery man, but he went next door. So I'm guessing I'm not getting anything today. So I was hoping to get the smart art box today. So I have to postpone tomorrow's video and probably swap it around with something else. Your yellow rose was so nice and I think you're probably not the only one. I bet my, a lot of you are like this, but you are so overcritical of yourselves. I noticed when you um, put your image down, you're like, oh, I like some parts, but I don't like other parts. Um, but when the overall rose looks so beautiful and it's, you guys need to give yourself a little bit more credit. <laughs> You guys, it almost sounds like you aren't quite satisfied with what you've accomplished and I don't like seeing that. I like seeing when people are like, even if the attempt isn't all that great, the type of, they, if they say, I love this or I enjoyed this and I learned so much from this and this is the outcome, you know, it's it's nice to see that. And I, you guys are just so overcritical of yourselves. I, I want you guys to say nicer things about what you've been able to draw. But it turned out amazing. <laughs> and um, I've noticed, like, I have some younger followers on uh, Instagram. And something that they do as well is they try something or they say, Oh, I wish I could draw like you. And they attempt something once and it doesn't look like mine. And then they give up um, and I'm like no 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 it's all practice and your artwork is never gonna look the same as another artist like you'll notice if, if many of you try that yellow rose when we compare it it at the end of the month everyone's is gonna look completely different there will be something there that just is not the same which I think is the best thing about art because you're making it so unique. It's, there's like there's not going to be anything, even though we're all following the same technique and following the same reference, it's not going to be the same as anyone else's artwork. It's still going to be unique to you. And that's a special thing. I don't think people are uh, taking or thinking about that much. They're not thinking about how unique their artwork is and there's only one like it. There cannot ever be a repeat. Um, and then if it looks really different, I think that's even better because then it's, it's super unique, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I don't want to hear you guys undermine yourselves. I want to hear only positive things. And then if you find that you struggle, then you can mention that you struggle, but don't tell yourself that your artwork is a disaster or that it's ugly because it never can be. Instead, maybe say, my artwork is ultra unique. <laughs> yeah, and that's also the beauty about it, Luella, because you experiment with things and you start finding your own sort of direction. You find techniques and things that you like, that work for you, that may not necessarily be the same as someone else's. Which is a bonus because that's that's what you sort of want to want to get to. You find what works for you, and that's why it's so nice. YouTube's got so many resources online that you can experiment and try new things all the time. And then the more things you follow and the more things you try, the more you find what's yours in a sense. You find what you just really enjoy doing.
actually a good example if I had to try and switch things up to a different perspectives so nothing to do with pencils I was extremely vulnerable in the smart art box video that I did with stamping and because it was the first time I tried it and I I ended up I liked my stamps but because in my mind I was comparing it to something that I was very good at so I was comparing it to what I could do with pencils and then I in the back of my mind I was sort of expecting a really good result of stamping and I didn't get that great a result and I but then as I was going through it I kept telling myself that this is my first go I should be proud of what I've managed to do in my first attempt using materials I've never used before and I felt much better for it and in the end I do like the stamps that I ended up creating and I I was also at a point where I was like oh, I don't think I will ever try stamping again but then I was like but I have to because I do if you look at some stamping videos online it's it's practice if you just play around with it and get familiar with the tools that you're actually using so that you know how to use the tools properly you will automatically get a really good result so it's just something that you have to put yourself out there and when you don't like it or you're not happy with it because you're only trying it to start off with you're only trying it um, as a beginner you really have to conquer that stage and I, because I've gotten so comfortable with colored pencils, I hadn't felt that way in a long time. <laughs> and then also to do that live was very, um, it was, I, had a, I had a very internal battle with myself throughout that entire video. And I, I think that that is probably one of the most vulnerable videos that I put out there and probably one of the best videos because I, though that's the kind of thing that i know a lot of beginners are experiencing and it's something that you just have to go through you just have to do it um because otherwise you'll just keep your life at a standstill all the time because you don't like being in that sort of vulnerable position if that makes sense so even though um you know i i didn't end up with a masterpiece I think there was a lot more contained in that video than just art. Um, so it's it's sometimes you got to recognize those different aspects within yourself um, as a human being. So not quite about art or your ability to do amazing art, but the feelings and sensations that you have to conquer when you start challenging yourself in new mediums and I think it's like that with anything in life not just art but it's it's <laughs> art can teach you so much <laughs> it, it really can it can put you in a state of complete peace and relaxation it can put you in a state of utmost frustration and anger it can it can make you feel so many things so it's just something <laughs> so worth exploring and when there's different mediums out there that you haven't tried before then test yourself because you'll be like i wonder what i'm going to deal with internally here and what i can learn from this because there's so much more you can learn than just looking at a piece of art that you may not love Okay, so we only have a few more minutes, so maybe I'll blend that in and then leave it at that for part two of the jellyfish, which is it's starting to get a nice three-dimensional shape, so that's good. And it's, ugh, it's going to look so nice, having such bright contrasting colors besides something that's so dark is um is really good so i'm just gonna blend this in again
just try and clean this a bit more. So it's starting to look like a proper underpainting. So this is the phase that this whole jellyfish is going to go through before we even touch on the detailing part of things. <laughs> cool, so that is part two of today's jellyfish. And how quick was that? So once you get started with something like this, then just hours can fly by you. So if you can schedule in the time, even if you schedule in 10 minutes, then that is enough. 10 minutes of peace a day. <laughs> Cool. Thank you guys for tuning into part two and thank you for bearing with me with all the um, technical difficulties and stuff that we had <laughs> earlier this morning. Um, yeah. Any questions before I head off? So in a couple of minutes I am going to start with part three of the fantasy art drawing. I'm going to work on the horns um, for those that are going to be there and... Um, the skit, so tomorrow I was going to do the smart art box, but I don't think I'm getting it today. So I'm not sure what's next. So I'll probably, I'll probably carry on with the jellyfish and the fantasy art piece tomorrow again. So I'll have a look. Okay. Wait, tomorrow is, what's today? It's today Monday. Today's Monday, yes. So Wednesday, I'm going to try new art supplies that I haven't tried before by Arteza. So they're going to be watercolor brush pens and their fine line pens. Um, I'm going to use them together and we're going to do that for the cherry blossoms. So that's going to be interesting. I haven't tried their products before. I also don't have that much experience in watercoloring. So that is going to be a great challenge and it's going to be fun using those supplies for the first time. And, yep, okay, cool, no questions. Good night, everybody, to those that are sleeping. For those in Australia, I hope you cope well with the heat. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.